Well, I enjoyed that. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of completely unprepared. Like, uh, I wasn't really sure of anything you were going to do. So it was kind of nice. I feel like um, you always kind of want to have options, but then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, what's your approach, I guess, like when you're playing with someone that you've not played with before or, or, or unfamiliar, like, do you, yeah, like, you have your things that you can go to or do you just sort of start, like, what's your, what's your jam there? Yeah, it's funny. I think, I think everybody who is playing improvised music kind of has a bag, like, they have their, their bag, but... So you, you have your kind of go-to box of things that you use or think about. But when you don't know what, other, what the other person is going to do, it's kind of, it's a, yeah. Usually that's kind of unusual, though, because like most of the time you're playing with someone and you kind of know they're playing because mm -hmm. you've seen them perform. But like I, I know, I've seen you perform, but I've never seen you play piano before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I was like, oh, what's he going to do? Like... But in the end, it was sort of, oh, well, I, I see what he's yeah, doing. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah, um, but it's funny, you know, with, with people talk about free improvisation as if, like, people don't do research. Hmm. Like, but usually you do. Like, if you're going to play with somebody and you don't want to fill a, a complete, well, at least I do. <laughs> I, you don't want to fill a complete fraud. You know, yeah, you, yeah. You, if you're playing with somebody who you've never met, hmm. I, I would want to go and listen to their recordings if they're like a name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Because, you know, everybody has imposter syndrome. So you kind of, you're, you want to kind of do what you can to forestall that. Mm. Um, you know, so familiarizing some, familiarizing yourself with the person's recordings is kind of, you know, part of the course. Just the kind of professional courtesy. Yeah, <laughs> <on their name>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it's an interesting one. And like, yeah, like piano used to be, I mean, I guess it was my first instrument. It's what probably I've spent the most hours on. But these days I don't even own a piano or, or have, I mean, I do have a little keyboard thing in my house that is in a closet somewhere. But like, it's of the instruments that I've played in my life, the one that gets the least amount of play. Like, even though I don't play as much guitar these days, there are guitars hanging in my studio, at least. Like, they're sort of a foot, you know? So like, I, I do feel quite removed from it as, a, as an instrument. But at the same time, there's like, there's some history there, like, 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 I mean, obviously you fall off the bike and like I, my, my playing is not what it once was in terms of like pure technical facility, but the, I've, I've sat at this thing enough hours to kind of have some ideas. Although that being said, I, like I, I, although doing a fair amount of contemporary stuff, I didn't do too much inside the piano playing just as it, as it kind of happened. I only brought some bits today because I, I had them because I'm doing some other drum stuff. Really. Mm. So I've got, you know, sticks and things that I would use for um, drum based things but yeah it, it's it's an interesting one that that getting to know someone as a, yeah. as a musical um, gesture but at the same time like I'm always wary of the idea of musical exposition or explicit exposition where it's just like I've heard enough improv in my life that is like the do -do 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 -do. and like yeah, it's right. like oh, oh, oh do you? yeah Which, it's funny you know when people people do talk about that it's like oh they're having a conversation it's yeah. like no they're not like, <laughs> it's not you're, you're misunderstanding what music is <laughs> yeah 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 but but it's interesting so but when you did play the piano did you um did you play jazz um towards the end like it was largely classical stuff and it wasn't like sort of university that i i started and it was kind of weird because i had played guitar in bands in which was I mean, I, had, I could read and all that kind of stuff, so that stuff was fine, but like it's a largely unread, leaning towards the improvised or jamming side of things. Whereas my piano playing was read, you know, like classical, straight classical things. So even like when we have songs when I would play like piano in a song, it, I've always felt very awkward because I, my, my facility wasn't for that. Like I couldn't sit down and just mm. jam on some chords because mm. like, like what, what, what's the, what's the, pay? Well, give me the music, you know. Did you ever have a, did you ever have a, a real book? Yeah, yeah. I mean like this was in, in university and, and then I did like, like have lessons on it and like I'm, I'm an okay jazz piano player. Like <laughs> I, these days actually I'm, I'm a bad one, but like at, at my peak I was okay. I could go to jam night and kind of get by. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's many lives ago at this point. But um, <laughs> it did open up the, the ability to sort of because it's something that I, I think about, well, less so, but like the fact that a lot of what I do, pitch is not a vector of interest yeah. at all. Like if with a lot of percussion and electronic stuff, there is there is often pitch as, as a, a product of what happens, but it isn't um, as fundamental as it is on a piano. It's like pitch is a, well, you know what it is? It's pitch as an aspect of timbre, which is really important. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes like 
if you're playing like prepared snare drum or mm. snare drum electronic, you're kind of getting these. I mean, there's a really rich pitch world oh, yeah, that's sure. coming from the snare drum. It's not an un, it's not an unpitched environment. No. But I think the the thing about piano is that it's this. It's not just pitched. It's like it's harmonic. It's a harmonic yeah, yeah, environment, yeah. and so it's almost like everything that you do when you're at the keyboard, you're signaling, you know, some direct potential direction yeah, yeah. to the whole world of pre-existing music. Yeah. yeah. Um, particularly when you're kind of combining two two pitches mm -hmm. together, and which pitches, and you know, in what kind of texture. So yeah, I mean, I don't know, like um. Yeah, it, maybe you can tell. I mean, I played a lot of jazz when I was younger, so um, I think I'm much better jazz pianist than um, classical pianist. All right. Um, um, but it's only because I, I never did much practice. Interesting. So, you know, you end up... Yeah, I mean, and it was funny. I remember when the first time somebody said, you, OK, well, we're going to play this number. I must have been about 15 or so. Uh, and can you play? Can you play changes? And so you got a lead sheet, and they were doing they were doing olio, which mm. is uh, rhythm changes. Yeah. And I'd never played rhythm changes mm. like at that speed, like B flat <laughs> major, you know, like. And it was like, what the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what the, this is so fast, you know. You, and then after a while, like you, you sort of something in your brain like mm. clicks in, and really it's kind of the way that your left hand thinks. I mean, I've still not really recovered. I still haven't quite gotten out of the left hand having a bass note at some point because, like, all jazz pianists have to get out of that yeah, yeah. and let let the bass player do that. So you yeah. have to like correct your left hand um, problem, mm -hmm. and I can do that if I really concentrate. But if I don't concentrate, I'm just like I'm just using my left hand to play. Um, you know, like uh, root notes and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that also happens, I guess, from like like whether you're doing solo stuff where you might have a bit more of the pinky on the root. Or but it's kind of, it's this, it's this thing about like orienting yourself in the changes. Mm. So it's not so much like needing to play them in order to know um, that you're playing the right chord, but that you're playing the right chord in the right place in the 32 bar form mm. and not getting lost without having the pinky there. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of find that. Tricky, but I mean, you know, it's been such a long time since I've played like jazz piano with a combo. And so, but um, but it, but but at least like when you when I'm playing improvised music, I feel like it's okay to um, lean into some of like the free jazz elements, mm. whereas I think other pianists who maybe don't have, you know, they they sort of feel a bit standoffish about right, right. about those uh, about those things, but. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, the, the other thing that I remember was when I started getting in, in, interested in improvisation, that the kind of music I was listening to is this very um, minimalist improvisation, like around about 2010 or so. All the, it was like a few years of this like mid 2000s silence, you know, like Berlin silence or New London silence or the the, the minimalist, hyper minimalist Japanese mm. stuff, you know, and Vandal Weiser. And I, I, I wonder about this, like, why was I interested in that? Why was I drawn to mm. that, uh, you know, at that time, having come straight from, like, jazz and whatnot? And I think it was because the, the, the more kind of classical European style of improvisation seemed too close to what I was doing already, yeah, like yeah. Derek Bailey's and, you know, Evan Parker and whatnot, that it was not... I wanted to kind of go far away from that. Mm. Um, and so then... Getting older has become a, a gradual, um, you know, feeling okay with notiness and hmm. or even or jazziness yeah, and yeah. Uh, gesture and all of these things that I thought, you know, when I was a bit younger were like verboten and you know <laughs> old. There was I don't know what the word is, but just gauche. Yeah, they were they were <laughs> unpleasant. They were they yeah, were yeah. not they were not necessary in music in the contemporary era, hmm. which needed to be, you know. Um, more rigorous or something. How much of that do you think is like your just sort of maturation versus like a sort of post genreness of like the hyper contemporary post genreness? I mean, I think it is mostly my own maturation, but I have noticed that more and more improvisers who were playing very minimalist stuff in the end of the 2000s have gradually gotten busier in mm. the kind of material that they admit. And to the extent that now it's kind of unusual to really go to an improvised set and hear like this 
like hyper minimalist mm. style. There are some people who still do it, but it's pretty unusual. I, I yeah, think. Yeah. Um, you know, like I, I went to a lot of improv um, in Berlin at the beginning of October, and it was all really pretty noisy. Mm. You know, it was you know there's a lot going on. So yeah. I'm not sure if we if if I'd gone to improv nights in Berlin 15 years ago that I would come away with that impression necessarily. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that because because I, I although having listened and played quite a lot of free jazz and European free jazz in my life, it isn't what I consider like my core like or or affinity. I mean, I can kind of do it fine, but like the even though I I do like a busier gestural language, it feels a little separate from that. I mean, I guess also oh, growing up not in Europe, that wasn't what I kind of grew up and heard first. It was more like Zorn and things like that of like which is has a kind of different flavor to it. But there's like um. I, I do very much like gesture and busyness, but at the same time, in my own stuff, I am still a bit hesitant of like, <laughs> like I mean, at, at a piano it's different because like I have eighty eight buttons here and, and each one has a pitch, you know, and like it, it's sort of a a more defined world in that way. But it's um, I feel less uh, desire to kind of slide into jazzy or free jazzy land mm. um, as as an aesthetic rather, you know, um, even though the yeah. the busyness is is uh, is agreeable like the gesture like I do quite I like a lot does that come from a little bit does that come from like limitation of means maybe sometimes? maybe to a certain extent I mean I, I think I can I can do that fine enough it, it's more the I guess my association of um, like old white European free jazzness. you know like it is so like pervasive that like it just kind of feels like cool we've I, mean, I don't know though I mean I, I guess I'm thinking I'm not just thinking about the European folks like, you know, Evan Parker and Brotsman. I'm thinking about Cecil Taylor and, yeah. and um, Ferro Sanders. And, and yeah, I mean, things like that do have a different flavor for me. But although okay. that, that, that's, I mean, that, there's also like a cultural context there that, that for, separates them as well. So like, but for me, that those music sound... I mean, obviously different, but like in like a genre different, even though they're really? both like in the kind of like a free jazz world. That's interesting because I, mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to say that Brotsman is like in a different genre from Cecil Taylor. I feel that would be doing both of them a disservice. Yeah, I mean, I guess it depends on aperture and how how genre subgenre <laughs> like mean, yeah. you know like <laughs> genre is boring anyway. I mean, genre is just way where, where you put the records in the record yeah, shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but are we talking like early seventy two or yeah, mid seventy two? Right. You know, like it's a. Uh... But still, though, I mean, I think there is this there is this thing about you know intensity and like um, they they had a they had sort of similar musical projects in that they were involved in you know, trying to, trying to kind of push levels, push the levels of intensity towards mm. maximum, as it were, yeah, yeah. you know, with acoustic instruments, um, which, which is, I think, a, a really fascinating and interesting project to, mm. to be exploring. And I mean, I know that, that that's stuff that other people in other kind of walks of music making have, have done that as well. But, you know, with acoustic instruments, it's kind of, it's, it's, it is kind of unusual in a little way because you know usually intensity or saturation is a marker of people who are using uh, electrified instruments. Mm. So I suppose that's why I kind of put them in hmm. in my mind you know, close together. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely like obviously like philosophical underpinnings and, and and sort of certain approaches and stuff. But for me, I think more than like thinking about it now and, and talking through it, it, like for me, European free jazz is, is like a codified genre as much as like something like bebop would be like there's like a like it, it has a, a like largely um codified expectations like and, and that's that's sort of like a me thing so that's not to, to put anything mm. on the music it's it's just sort of i guess maybe my experience or my listening or like being a, around i mean i guess we're not in europe anymore but like um <laughs> <laughs> being around it enough that like you know having heard a bunch of that that uh, yeah I mean, I have, I guess, a similar, like, bugbear with, like, acousmatic is, like, a term in, like, you know, electronic music. Like, there are certain, like, things that have a, a, a genre connotation where they're not intended to. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of, mm, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> genre is very gnarly. And yeah, It's yeah. kind of boring to, to talk about. But, <laughs> but it, it's funny, though, that, like, um, this, the, the, this instrument, the piano, is a very generic instrument, like, it's... It's inserted itself and defines a lot of genre. Mm. 
Mm. Um, so whenever you're involved in playing it, um, what you, whatever you do on it, you're always invoking some kind of uh, generic um, set of references. Um, uh, you know, it, it's a little like a drum set in some ways. You know, if you think about like every time you play a every time you play a drum kit, um, you know, when you really have the whole thing set up and you haven't like dismantled it. Um, but even if you do that, I think it sort of has some generic signifier. Mm. But certainly when it comes to like um, types of groove or types of rhythmic phrase or, uh, you, know, um, you know, it's almost like every single rhythmic loop that you, you end up doing is, is its own genre. I mean, mm. you, know, you, you know, there's like, oh, th this beat is Argentinian, this beat is Cuban, yeah, yeah. this beat is Mexican, you know, this beat is uh, Jamaican, you know, and mm. so on. So I'm, you know, with these, with these, and the piano is a little like that. I feel like the rhythm section, in particular, has this this important determinant in, like, you know, how music is thought about or, or kind of conceptualized or compartmentalized. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you know, the piano is is one of them. Yeah. I mean, you're just thinking now, like, I guess in a Western context specifically, but like mimetically, like, if, like if you just asked, like, what is a musical instrument? Like, piano is probably like. Or maybe guitar or something. I don't know. Like, what would be like the the platonic instrument in like just a neutral Western yeah. context? I mean, usually, yeah, you would have violin, piano, mm. electric guitar, the kind of like three canonical uh, Western musical instruments, which kind of define ways of thinking about music. Mm. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Like the way that you think about music from from the point of view of a string instrument. Um, is like at some in some sense kind of at odds with the way that you think about music, and in some ways I think the the, the keyboard instruments have kind of defeated the. I mean, at least in the eighteenth and nineteenth century, they kind of defeated the uh, the the monophonic. Well, even before that, you had the voice. Mm. So, like you know, the way people thought about music in the Renaissance and before was kind of from the point of view of vocal polyphony, at least in terms of notated or Literally, like you know, notated music, but gradually, like the keyboard and the way that you think about keyboard playing from the point of view of like the bass and like the relationship between the bass and the treble, and mm. then what you put in the middle ends up being dominant. But I mean, I noticed that even when I'm playing, that you know, when you know, when you and I are playing, I'm like, oh, that's the same note, that's yeah, the same <laughs> harmony, it's the same chord, yeah, yeah, you know, um, and often, you know, if you're playing. If you're playing for improvisation, you wouldn't have like a bass line or anything. Mm. But you might, you might have a, you might have some sort of melodic, harmonic content. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's it's funny how you know people's like, well, at least my mind works with um, you know, what you end up thinking about when mm. when you're playing. Well, I'm I'm kind of like trying. To, I'm trying not to think too much about anything. Um, Maybe I'm, but I noticed that, I noticed one thing I was thinking about when I was playing was I'm not looking at them. Maybe I should look at them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I remember that thought kind of, other, other times I wasn't thinking This is also a, an unusual setup in that like we're like. Yeah, we could see each other, but then I was like, no, no, no I, I can hear what he's doing. I don't need to look, you know. Yeah, yeah. I it's really funny. I, like I often, yeah, when playing with other people, I often like either close eyes or, or tend to kind of sort of drift in. I mean, obviously my ears are like open, but like, yeah, it's not often that you're like sat face to face, like, like, uh, you know. Yeah. I mean, obviously we're like a couple meters from but each other. But it's weird because like, like classical musicians all the time, like look at each other all the time. Mm. And I noticed when I was watching some classical musicians, like uh, some contemporary classical musicians improvise recently, that they all kept looking at each other. So they would sort of, the bass player and that player would look over at the, mm. you know, the string players and, I was like, this is weird. Like, no one does this. It's so odd. He's like, you look like you're playing a piece. Yeah. You know? Like, no one, no one who improvises looks at each other. Like, only very rarely. Yeah, yeah. You know, it seems kind of idiot. It seems kind of unidiomatic. Mm. You know? I mean, I guess if there's like a specific thing we're trying to do it for like some kind of timing reasons and like we've developed a meta thing that's happening, then, then that kind of visual uh, communication becomes important. But often, yeah, it, it's, uh, I mean, it's I might like, like what, look are you, what are you looking to communicate anyway? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, but because I think so often of, the way free improvisation works is that you are you're listening really hard mm. and you're trying to kind of respond 
in a generous way to what the other performers are doing. And I guess, it, it, I don't know, is that, is that a thing about, that John Stevens wrote about where it's like, you know, improvisation is giving. Mm. So you're kind of, you're looking to support and kind of give things to the other person, which they can take and run with. And then they'll run with something and then they'll give you something like a little, like a, sometimes you know the way that bubbles form in, in, a, in, a, in an ice cube or something, you get a nucleation point. So there'll be like, there'll be a, a single texture that will happen for a while and then there'll be a little impulse and suddenly that, this will mean that you can move, move from one yeah, thing yeah. to the next thing. And so you're often like, as a performer, you're waiting for other people to give you things or you're giving things to other people. You don't need to look at them to do that. No, no. You know, and in fact, sometimes if you do look at them, it kind of ruins the magic. <laughs> yeah. What are you, yeah, it's like, what are you doing? Stop looking. <laughs> but it's so funny because like chamber musicians, when they're playing, you know, stuff from, from parts, yeah. are looking at each other all yeah, the yeah. time to yeah. sort of signal we are playing music or I don't yeah. know what it is. I mean, there's also like a physicality that comes, like, like where you, like you're, we're in, like there's like a kind of a different, it's a, a whole different body yeah. language thing that happens as well. Yeah, yeah. Which here, I mean, I guess each of us will do our undulations or whatever, but we're not like. Yeah, exactly. It's you know. not, we're not trying to sell anything. No, no. <laughs> or at least, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are some improvisers who do, do, do kind of do, you know, like the Keith Jarrett's of this mm. world, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I kind of think that's a little corny, but you know. Yeah. But I imagine that's a fairly standard view amongst a lot of improvisers. But yeah, it yeah. is interesting that the, the the almost like the politics of of the eyeball. Yeah, um, yeah. In, in in improvised music is kind of interesting. Yeah. Cool. Should we play some more? Oh, we should say yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Cut that. <there. laughs> 